Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the CDL Driving Academy podcast. And today we have a super experienced master driver, Joe. He is a titan in the industry. Uh, he is an expert at driving these huge wide loads that most people can't do. And he is actually growing his trucking business. So we're going to get to hear a little bit about his story and see what the secrets are to his success. How are we doing, Joe? Doing pretty good. And thank you for having me, Jonathan. Nice. So I see that you're in the truck now. What kind of truck do you have? Um, so the truck that I'm in right now is a W9, 2016 model W9. It's a double frame truck, um, four axles, uh, spec'd out just to do uh, heavy haul equipment. Nice. And what, what do you like about heavy hauling? Or let's explain what heavy hauling is just for the viewers who don't really understand. Okay. So heavy haul is, is, is customarily a multi-axle setup when you kind of transport loads, 100 plus uh, 150, you know, in that range, um, then that's considered heavy haul. Um, normally it's reserved for the, for the veteran drivers, but you have some new guys, man, that's, that's definitely a pioneer at a young age. <laughs> so, and what, what are some of the hardest parts about driving a heavy haul uh, load? Um, I'll be honest. Um, I mean, you, you gotta stay attentive. You have to stay patient. Um, I mean, there's just a lot of things that's going to happen on the highway that you just have to keep your poise and, uh, you know, make sure your headspace is in the right place because you will be challenged while you're out here from the cars, from the, the red lights, from the terrain, the weather. I mean, it's just everything is a challenge because sometimes you transport loads, um, 80,000 pounds, which is the actual weight of a whole nother truck and trailer with its load. So there's always a challenge. And, uh, your, your second or your other question that you asked, um, I love the challenge. Um, I love the challenge of doing something new. Um, one day I may have a load that's that's 15 feet high. I mean, I've done 19 foot high loads, um, permitting through multiple states, just the different challenges that come with it. Um, it keeps you occupied, especially after being in the industry so long. It kind of creates a new wave of, of interest for you. Nice. And what's the heaviest or the most interesting load that you've done? Um, heaviest I've been was a total of 210,000 pounds. I hauled the excavator. Um, I think it was a 850 or something, Cabelco, I think is what it was. And, um, don't, don't quote me on that, but it's been a while since I did that machine and it, it grossed me out around 210. Um, the machine was a hundred and, uh, 137,000 pounds by itself. Um, and then, um, uh, most interesting load. Um, I just did a super load recently. Um, it was a 19 foot load that was 17 feet wide. We had a 50 man crew out. We had to clear between power lines, railroad crossings, and, um, you know, just any object that could, uh, uh, you know, basically be in the way of the load. Um, we had to clear about a thousand of them. And we're talking wow. a 200, 300 mile stretch going just from Louisiana to Texas. So those loads are fun. They're challenging, but they're real fun in the end when you think back about them. And did you have to manage all that or did you just have to worry about uh, driving it safely? Um, no, I had to set everything up. So, um, so I kind of do, I kind of wear a lot of hats in my company. Um, being an owner, when you start out small, you, you kind of have to do a little bit of everything, right? And then you progress into putting people in those places. Um, but what happens is, yeah, I had to manage it. It was a two month process in Louisiana, um, in Texas, which was the state that I was delivering in. Um, it took me about a matter of two weeks. Um, what happened was in Texas, I, I got approved, but Louisiana took so long. So I had to spend another week getting reapproved in Texas and Texas was very understanding. They helped me out a lot because they knew I was kind of up against the wall with a construction project that was coming up in Louisiana. So if I didn't get out of Louisiana by a certain date, then I would have got held up and had to start the whole process over. So, um, it worked out. It was very interesting. I had to clear a lot of districts between Louisiana and Texas. Um, and it's a challenge. I mean, it's always interesting. Uh, you learn a lot. That's why I always advise people to do a lot for yourself in the beginning, because yeah, it seems like a lot of work, but it makes you more knowledgeable in the industry in the long run. And to pique people's interest, if you're comfortable sharing, what's the round number of what that load paid for? No, I can tell you straight up. It was a $60,000 load. Um, the good thing is I had a good broke on a load. Um, he was very knowledgeable, a guy named Ronnie and uh, he's out of Texas, real good guy. Um, he was knowledgeable. So what we kind of did, we kind of just split it, um, where, uh, we split the rate and then he paid for, uh, most of the expenses out of his, out of his portion. So I took home a little over half of that in the end with the, about the end of the project. And that's about two, two weeks worth of work around 30, a little bit more than 30,000. No, two months, two months, two months worth of work. Nice. Yeah. Okay. But, but keep it in mind that I'm still working. My truck is just that it's just an ongoing phone call, email process that takes place. Very cool. Nice. 
now that we got people's interested about making a lot of money in trucking like you do, let's go through your story. How, how long have about, you had your CDL for? How long have um, you had your CDL license for? So I got my CDL license in 2001 when I was 19 years old. Uh, 42 now, I'd be 43 in May. So May makes uh, makes uh, 23 years for me. Um, grew up in the industry. My dad had trucks. So um, I learned the industry at a very young age, but I learned it from a local perspective. And then I kind of pioneered over the road in my family. Always in Louisiana? Uh, in the beginning, yes. And then I, I took it um, out of state once I became 21. And when did you purchase your first truck? Um, so I got lucky. Man. I was blessed. Um, my dad and my uncle uh, were working at the time. My uncle decided he wanted out. So he gave me my first truck at 20. Um, I started off driving it for him. I guess they liked the way I was managing the truck, doing all the work myself, running it, finding my own loads and things of that nature. So um, they agreed to let me take over the truck. Um, and, and from 20 years old, I was I was rolling with my own truck. I was doing a dump truck locally in uh, Louisiana, New Orleans area. And then, um, like I said, when I turned 21, I was like, you know what? Enough of that. It's going over the road. So. And yeah. so did you start off with your class B license or did you get your class A right from the beginning? Um, I always had class A. Um, I started off in a class A vehicle as well. Yeah. Nice. First, nice. Job, first job. Yeah. Beautiful. Very cool. So if people are kind of on the fence between, hey, should I get my class B or class A? What, what would you recommend? Um, I always think that you should you should uh, test out in the um, in the vehicle that you're interested in driving. Um, I don't think class A is for everyone. <laughs> like if you if you committed to a box truck with air brakes or something of that nature, or you committed to dump truck tracks or quad X or something of that nature, I think you go for what you're comfortable with. And I'm also a fan of people breaking apart the lesson, which means like I love the fact now that they have automatics. That way you can learn to drive the truck first, and then you can incorporate uh, a manual if you still choose to do it that way. So um, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to people doing it in sections. Now, to, what I understand now is the cost is kind of similar to get the B as well as the A. So um, as I tell people as well, I mean, um, I, I know different schools run different programs. I can't speak to your school, but um, some people allow them to come back and test out in a class A for additional costs. And I'm sure that's something you can speak to. Um, so I think you go for what you're comfortable with and then progress as you go. Nice. Very cool. Um, and give people a difference between local work and like over the road work. Um, so local work normally consists of LTL freight. Um, that's like your Everett Express, um, uh, your yellow freight companies like that, that have done it on a local level. Um, you have uh, dump trucks. A lot of the time they're local because they're building the city. They're, they're building around them. Um, you have a lot of intermodal uh, container work um, that's done locally from railheads, steamship lines. And stuff like that, that that's pretty local and that is uh freight that comes from overseas that's shipped to um a local place where they can um basically provide that that freight to a local community um that's your local freight over the road is normally it's pretty much the same thing it's just that um that freight typically goes further so you may have a manufacturer in a particular city that manufacture things that ship to uh multiple warehouses across the u.s um sometimes it goes into canada and as well as uh mexico so that's northern and southern borders we're crossing uh, myself, um, I don't cross any borders, but, you know, companies who do over the road do. Uh, and, and that's kind of more of an uh, example of kind of both, where you're, you're in, uh, Intermodal can go over the road as well. It's rare that you send dump trucks over the road, but there are some commodities that's transported by companies like Oakley and stuff like that that do um, things that ship in through the port as well. And that normally come in by barge and things of that nature, and then they'll load it onto a truck and they'll truck it to a city in particular that may not have a waterway that connects to that city. So they'll have to bring it in by rail or by truck. <laughs> Excuse me, I've worked in three parts of the uh, transportation industry. So I've worked on the water. Um, well, no, nah, I guess it would be two, yeah, it'd be two. So I worked on the water and I've also worked uh, with trucks as well. So I did um, work on the on the river, uh, handling barges um, as a deckhand lead man, and then eventually an acting fleet mate where I tied off barges, broke them off, sent them to elevators, and I ran my own fleet as well. So. Um, did a lot of that, and then I, I transferred, and then at that point is when I switched over to trucking. Nice. So when people are kind of deciding, hey, should I go local or over the road, where do most people make the most money, in local or over the road? Um, I would definitely say um, over the road, because over the road is more consistent to make the money. Normally, locally, it's about projects. It's about different phases. Um, you know, the state is going to issue so much money locally for road projects, bridge projects. Um, there are some building projects, but it's not every day, especially in a city that's established, that they're building like mass amount of things. So 
unless you're in the Midwest, somewhere in the oil field industry, or you're up in North Dakota where there's oil, a lot of drilling, things of that nature, um, it, it's not going to be the same consistency that Over the Road will provide to you. Fair enough. Yeah, very cool. Well, let's kind of go through your your journey. How so? You start. You got your your truck at twenty. And then you start to kind of build your company. When did you start adding more trucks to your fleet? And what was that process like? So um, I kind of waited. Um, what I did was I want to say I added my first owner operator to my fleet. Um, uh, like 2014 was the first time I did it. So what happens is um, I bring a guy on and uh, he purchased the truck with intent to run with someone else. And, you know, he was a friend of a friend. And when I found out that the guy, you know, had him buy a truck and, and he didn't put him on. I was like, you know what? I, I kind of felt bad for the guy. He turned out to be a good guy, real good guy. We're still friends now. He stayed in my fleet for over 365 days. So I tell anyone, if you stay with me for a year, two things I'll guarantee you. You'll totally understand how to run your own company and you'll make your first six figures in your life if you haven't crossed that threshold. So um, successful with that. Everyone that has ever worked with me, whether you're experience level or not, I don't care how experienced you are. You will generate money um, because the system just allows you naturally to do it. And then on top of that, like I say, you, you'll learn the industry because I don't hide anything from the guys. I actually encourage them to go off on their own. Really? That, that, and why, why have that mindset when so many people think they want to keep everything for themselves? Well, for myself, um, starting out in an industry, uh, I remember doing loads for like $595 to go from New Orleans to Houston and come back. And I hold on to that. I never let that go because it reminds me you know, where I started. And I mean, I remember half of that, actually probably a little more than half of that being spent on fuel. So like, you know, when, when I think about that, back then I knew no one was going to ever hold me back. Like I, I didn't care about, you know, um, uh, what opportunity were providing me when it was in their company structure. I wanted my own because I wanted to know personally what it felt like. So um, just because you encourage someone to leave doesn't mean they're going to leave. But people want to know that you support them whether they leave or they stay. So for me, I support you if you're with me. I support you if, you, if you're not. Only thing I ask people is just be straight up. If, if your goal is to leave, give me a respectable amount of time because I have customers that are, that are banking on your availability. And if, if I don't set it up that way, then now you're going to look at me and say, well, Joe, you don't have it set up for me to be productive. So I have to set it up in a way that you can be productive, but those customers are relying on you as well. So give me a, give me a month. Give me a couple weeks. Just give me a notice. Some people will just up and leave. And I mean, you know, those people, I'm not mad at them. I just don't, I choose not to work with them while I don't really try to help them anymore going forward. But the people that, that lead the right way, they can call me anytime they can ask any question. And, you know, and, and the reason I do that is because I tell them up front, hey, if you're going to leave, let me help you. I'll help them get insurance quotes. I'll give them advice on how to go off on their own. You'll learn how to book loads. You'll learn what rate cons look like. You'll learn the information that you need to know, but there's still a whole world outside of what they know as a driver that they won't know. And that's something that I can teach you if I know that your intent is to want to go off on your own. So yeah, everybody who's uh, expressed to me that they, their dream is to have their own setup, I've helped them and every last one of them are successful until today. That gave me at least one year at a time. That's amazing. And it's yeah. not a year of like, it's a year of them making money, right? That a year of them learning. So it's, it would make no, it's a no brainer. So exactly. what's kind of the difference between somebody who's a driver and kind of thinking about becoming an owner operator who should in your mind become an owner operator and who should just stay as a driver? Um, I think that people who are, um, who are very tedious and meticulous, I think they make the best uh, company owners um, is because they, they they're going to do it until they get it right. And those are the type of people that actually excel. I'm a very meticulous person. I'm very tedious. Um, and those, like I said, those are the people that excel. Now, the people who are in it just for the money, um, those are the people that struggle. And the reason they struggle is because every time that they notice there's a dollar in the reefer industry, they jump to it. And then they leave reefer, and then they go to dry bed. And then they leave that, and then they go to flat bed. Um, my dad, his favorite thing to say was, you got to get somewhere and sit there. And when you do that, things will develop for you. And um, when I bounced around as well, nothing happened. No growth, no success at all. Um, I took a quick break from trucking. I took like a year or two off. Um, I was still driving, but I sold my truck and I took time off from running my own company. And uh, when I came back in, I told myself I was going to do it right this time. And I did that. And every time I felt like it was, you know, things weren't working out, I would just tell myself, and my dad used to always tell me, which is, son, you got to get somewhere and sit there. 
So, so we talked about local versus over the road. We talked about driver versus owner operator. Um, um, what's, what are the main things that people do get wrong when they start their own business instead of kind of jumping around? Are there anything else that people should avoid doing that you see as common mistakes? Yeah. So, um, my rule of thumb is advice is the single most greatest thing you can have in anything that you do. Because like a lot of the times when we don't look at the math book that you learned in school, that was advice. The reading book you learned from that was advice. Science, that's advice. It's someone sharing something with you that you didn't know, right? So a lot of people come in the industry and what happens is they'll get one day of advice and then they'll take it and run with it. And then when, when they reach the limit of that advice, then past that point, they start to fail. So my thing is get next to someone who truly understands the business, truly understand and pray that they open up to you. And more often than not, when you take people advice, and they see success. One, you learn that you have the ability to excel with the right advice. And then they learn that you have the ability to listen and excel because they're advising you and you're taking their advice. So that's one of the most important things that I've always learned in the industry is to take good advice. Um, you have to be able to decipher between good and bad. But I think you can learn something from almost anybody. I mean, you, you can learn success stories from, from people who fail because remember, they have a story as to why they failed. And now you have to be able to work with that and understand where their failures were and how you can make it a success. Um, I've taken things that I've seen people struggle with and I've excelled, but I had that advantage of seeing their struggles, understanding where to stay away from, which forced me to realize what I need to work toward. So it's just a lot of that, man. Um, and then outside of that, um, a system, you have to have a good system in place. Understand who's going to work on your truck. Understand where your tires are going to come from. Understand what things cost. The last thing I'll tell people is don't make any large purchases within the first two years. And that's a minimum. That's not a, that's not a maximum, it's a minimum. Because what happens is you take people, the average person may have worked a job because they get in the trucking a lot later than what I got in. So they may be 30 something years old, great credit, home, 401k, everything is working for them, okay? And then what happens is they'll, they'll, they'll um, pull that 401k down, invest that money in trucking and it's not a bad idea i'm not gonna say it's a bad idea because it's on your preparedness but when they do that what happens is as soon as they hit a good week they want to go and upgrade the house they want to get a new car they want to start taking trips now is not the time you're running a business now this is not a check where you blow it all and get another one next week you have to learn how to flip the money and i, I mean i remember when i first started i was flipping at 50 percent. I, I would make i would spend a thousand and make two thousand right because if i spend uh half the money on fuel, what I had to some degree was a, was a profit as long as I had money put up for maintenance. Now I'm able to flip my money. I, I'm, almost, I'm almost ashamed to say it for some of the drivers that, that won't probably ever see this, this level, but I'm able to flip my money sometimes 26 times now. Wow. You nice. see what I'm saying? But it's, it's, it's the point where I've made it in the industry because if you do a low, like I said, 60 and your expenses or zero or more minimal fuel and permits i mean when you factor that in of course there was a lot more money involved but even if i take home half of that if i spend uh i don't know hypothetically two thousand right and make 30 that's 15. you see what i'm saying whereas the the broker he consumed a lot of the debt because you know he doesn't have the expenses i have so he said okay well we'll split it down the middle and if the expenses come to 20 he walk away with 10 just from putting a deal together right but if I walk away with 30 and my expenses between fuel and permits came up to 2000. You got 28K and, in your pocket. Yeah. And I'm just throwing numbers around. I'm not saying these are the actual numbers, but I'm just giving an example or analogy how sometimes it can pan out for you. So a lot of that is good advice, hard work, diligent, and being focused, having a plan and a system in place. If you do that and, and minimize your spending in the beginning, man, you, you'll do great in the industry. I mean, you, you can't fail. It's proven. You can't fail. I agree 100%. No matter whether the industry goes up or down, if you have the right skills, you have the right tools, it's good to go. Uh, so pretty much uh, I would add one thing to your advice side, which would be the filter that I like to use and we like to teach our students is when you're getting advice, yes, you can learn from everybody. People can be an example or they can be a warning. But the kind of filter I use personally is oh, I take advice from people who have what I want, right? So pe successful people like you in the trucking industry, great people to take advice from. There's going to be mm -hmm. people in the trucking industry who are not making any money. They're going to say trucking is dead. Probably not the best person to take advice from if he doesn't have the results that you're looking for. Is that is that fair to say? 
It is, but I, I, I agree that also you got to learn to turn negatives into positives. So if he's saying it's, it's not, is trucking is dead, I think you ask him why. And then when he tells you why, you know, <laughs> you probably you, you probably understand why it's dead to him just probably by the way he talks. You know what I'm saying? Or just the mindset that he brings to the table. If a person has a completely negative mindset to say that an industry that does billions is dead, then you probably already have the answer. But why not listen in anyway, right? Um, um, what I learned is uh, you can, I mean, 10% out of 100, yeah, majority is negative at 90, but that 10%, man, you'd be amazed at, you know, the value that you might can find in that small 10%. So um, I'm one, I like to listen to everyone, but I do agree. Yeah, you take it from those who have it. I think you, I think you, um, I think you reserve uh, next level advice from successful people and you, yes. you reserve uh, failure advice from people who failed. And then you stay away from what they did to fail and you and you spearhead towards what they've done to succeed. 100% agree. And the other piece of advice that I heard from you that I really agree with is the whole idea of like staying in something and having that compound over time, right? So we started off with don't be jumping around in the industry. Figure out exactly what your niche is. And get good at that niche and then you can actually get known and you can expand. Also on the on the money side, right? Don't be spending all your money. We see a lot of people get into the industry making more money than they ever did before. And the first thing they start buying are Gucci shoes or Gucci belt and all this other stuff. They start driving around in like a Cadillac and they haven't won that game yet. You need to discipline, invest in yourself first. And then that's going to start compounding over time until you get to the point where like yourself, Joe, you said you can almost 26 X your money uh, every time you invest into yourself or into your company, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and that would be a higher end number but yeah I've, I've done it before yeah nice so to give people some inspiration what is like an an average okay uh income that you can help somebody make as an owner operator if they choose to work underneath your tutelage um i'll be totally honest with you um the more accurate numbers I mean, and people throw numbers around all the time if a guy comes to you with a truck and a trailer as a new person if they do i'm gonna say a hundred and 50 or anywhere from 130 to 150 their first year out those are excellent numbers those are excellent numbers and the second year i look to get you to the two hundred thousand dollar range um that's with good home time right um not spending every weekend on the road and then that's also with um you know taking in the fact that you're new so i'm also training you so i'm training you how to tarp certain loads i'm training you uh also about the industry as a whole because you take the companies, and I won't call names, but you take the companies that haul specific freight. You may have a company that only haul coils. You may have a company that only haul lumber, right? And so on and so forth. Well, people say, well, no, I could tarp. Well, I'm sure you can tarp lumber. You've tarped a million lumber loads. But when I send you out there to tarp a coil after tarping lumber, automatically you're confused. Or if you go to a customer that has just some weird piece of material that they're telling you to tarp that has sharp edges, and you're not looking for that. You just shredded a thousand dollar pair of tarps. So you have to understand the industry as a whole. Again, with low securement, I mean, you, I'm sure you teach low securement to some degree with, with CDL school. So a lot of people don't understand a bulkhead and what's required when there's a bulkhead there for securement. Um, I teach that. A lot of people don't understand when there's no bulkhead how to secure load. They don't understand the space and the straps. And they come into the world confused. And when I break that down to them, instantly they know how to tarp a load now or secure a load. Because when you when you explain the rules to people and you also teach them how to apply, actually apply the rules, then instantly overnight it makes them smarter. So um, those are some of the things that make it uh, beneficial when you work with somebody experienced. And that's the kind of money you can make by learning those small tips after year one to year two. Now you're not learning those small things then you excel and now you look at to look at to do you know over two hundred thousand i'll show you how simple that is if you come in and you make 40 i mean four thousand dollars a week right in a 52 week span that's two hundred thousand already right yep. but of course we know no one works for full 52 weeks you're gonna have breakdowns you're gonna have maintenance you're gonna have time off so now that brings you somewhere sometimes to to the 150 range because one bad week as well as downtime that'll that'll drop you quickly right but now year two, you understand how to push a lot of that downtime to the weekend because you're doing preventative maintenance. You're doing different things to make yourself more successful. And now you're a little more heady in the industry 
as to how to be successful and not let downtime affect your money. So then now you bump a $4,000 a week average to a $5,000 a week average. And then you actually maybe hit a full 52 weeks because the preventative maintenance that's done on a weekend allows you to be successful during the week. Instantly now, five weeks, I mean, 52 weeks at 5,000, it's 200 plus thousand a year. And that's the leap that people make from year one to year two a lot of the times in my, I mean, my, uh, my system. So pretty much what I'm hearing is the money's out there, right? All you have to do is make yeah. sure that you're doing your work, making sure the truck stays on the road, make sure you're staying safe, and you can grab all the money that you want. Exactly. I did 36 loans last year personally myself, and I outgrossed everybody in my company. And that's with running a company all at the same time. Exactly. But that's, of course, me doing heavy home, right? But I did 36 loads all last year out of 52 weeks. That's amazing. So, yeah, and no one in my company I grossed since so, so yeah. if you if you guys want a nice guy to compete with, get on to Joe's team and let's see if you can outgross him. Yeah, you know what I do? I call him and I read the numbers. I say, hey, listen, you're behind average. I mean, last month you did twenty. Why 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 we're fifteen? No, I, I go over the numbers with him. I keep him motivated, and and I teach him that because you have to know the numbers. Like, what are you targeting? Like I just said, if you're targeting four grand a week, right? And you and you having a a, a lax week. You, you, your baby has something to do at school on Monday, you know, someone's sick on Tuesday and you just don't get out the house, right? You should have a target number for that. You should say, okay, on a short week, I have to do three grand. I don't care what happens. I have to hit three. If you do that, you'll be surprised how successful you'll become in the industry because every week you're targeting something. So yes, we make it friendly. It's fun. And I mean, I'm the type, man, come, come the end of the year, I hand out Columbia Jackets. I don't even put my name in them. Hey, listen, that's for you. You work for that. You know, um, Brandon is important, but believe it or not, if you just do the work. Brandon will find you. You know, um, people will find you. People will want to know your story. They will want to hear your success and they want to know and share that news with other people that want that same success. So you don't have to put your name on everything to get in front of people's eyes. Just be great at what you do. That's true. The best people will always rise to the top. And like you said, yeah. And what, what we actually teach our students and our staff here is if you don't have a target, if you don't have a goal, you'll never know when to get there, right? So being very clear on that target is super powerful. I definitely I agree. agree with that. I agree. Now, expanding this wealth, expanding this business, how do you balance like family? Because a lot of people have this understanding, hey, if I become a truck driver, I won't have any time for family. But I understand you have five children and you're happily married. So how do you balance that? So... um. I mean, honestly, now in, at this point in my life, I mean, my son's 22. My oldest son is 22. My daughter's uh, 19. She's in college. I have a son graduating. He's going to college next year. Um, and then I have two young kids as well, a six and a, um, a well, about to be one month, I mean, one year old. So um, balancing it, like I said, I did 36 loads last year. Um, the relationship that I have with customers is this. I'm not looking to be the first person you call because I'm not looking to be the cheapest. But when you call me, I will do the best job and I will go move freight that other people can't move. I mean, they call me all the time and say, hey, listen, Joe, I mean, they're honest with me because they know how I am. I sent three trucks over there. They couldn't move it. What's your price? And I tell them my price and they pay it. So, um, again, be the best at what you do and you don't have to work hard. I mean, we all know quality and quantity, right? I'm selling quality. So when I move, it's, it's impactful. That's why I can get bigger loads and get paid for them because when I show up, my truck will be reliable because I don't work it a lot, right? My experience is, 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 is competitive to some of the best in the industry, but I compete up. I don't really have to compete down. The equipment that I buy, the money that I invest, I actually take freight from larger carriers as opposed to compete with the, the small. Most of the smaller car carriers can't compete with me because the money that I'm spending, I'll go out and spend a hundred grand just to do an upgrade on my trailer. So. It's hard for them to compete with that. So I'm actually taking a lot of fall off loads from the bigger carriers that they can't handle or they don't have a driver that's experienced enough to touch that. Now you have to give it to me because I have the experience and I have the knowledge and I can do what your CEO can do, but I'm still behind the wheel. Oh, that's a dangerous combination right there. Yeah. And just to give people an understanding, how much have you invested in the truck that you're in? Uh, this, uh, yeah, it's a half a million dollar setup. So the truck alone is... Is um like three hundred thousand, and then uh, the trail is a quarter of a million. And I went back and spent a hundred on it, hundred thousand on it. I had it modulated, cut, and I had a special beam, special beam designed for it that breaks off in sections. 
Um, the trailer can go from uh, 28 feet, 10 inches in a well to uh, 53 feet, or I can do 46 or 36 in the well. Um, it's modular, so it doesn't drag the ground when I put real weight on it. Um, and then other than that, I can go anywhere from five axles to 11 axles with the same setup because I can take axles off, plug and play all day. And just to give people really an understanding, like a $100,000 truck, that's a nice new truck. When you start talking about $500,000, that's like a whole different animal. Like these are not trucks that you just take any type of load on. These are trucks specifically to carry this heavy weight. Is that correct? Exactly. And then um, and so if you have a $500,000 truck, you, you pull in some serious weight with it. Um, those are probably trucks pulling uh, like those uh, 300 or 300,000 uh, pound loads and stuff like that. Like those are massive loads. Um, my truck is 300,000, right? But it's an icon special edition, limited edition. So it's a uh, yeah, limited edition number 139, whatever it is over there. Um, it came double frame, uh, spec totally from the from the uh, Kentworth dealership. Um, 600 horsepower, uh, 18 speed transmission, 391 rears. And like I said, it is it's fully loaded, diamond cut interior. I mean, I have everything that they that they offered that year. So, nice. um, and that's what you want. You want to be comfortable when you're out here. You want to spend the money. Don't worry, you'll make money. And if you're comfortable. Then you don't have a reason to complain. Go be productive, you know? Cool. And if people want to know more about you or want to join your team, what's the easiest way they can do that, Joe? Um, they can reach out to me on IG. So I have an IG. It's Joe Gipp. That's all one word. J-O-E-G-I-P-P. -P. Um, am I breaking up? No, you're good. Honest, but okay. Yeah. Um, so um, it's uh, J-O-E-G-I-P-P, -P, all one word on IG. Um, if you're looking to get in touch with me for employment reasons, you can go on my website, www.gibsonlogistics.com. Um, and then other than that, I mean, um, you know, Hey, people like yourself, man, I appreciate you having me on and promoting what I do. And, uh, of course, man, I, I can't thank you enough. Not a problem. And we're going to put, um, his IG and his website on all the descriptions. So on our YouTube channel and on our show notes as well. And the last question, Joe, where do you think the industry is going in 2024? Is it going to be better or worse in 2023? Um, I think, um, I think it's always going to be better for those who are prepared and I think it's always going to be worse for those who are not. I don't think there's one answer to that. I think it's your preparedness that determines your outcome. And that's what it is. I'm, I'm, people are saying trucking is dead and I'm hauling loads every day, all day. I'm out on the road right now. So if you prepare, you do good work, people are going to call you. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to even advertise or promote it. Um, I do want to add one more thing. Um, next year, we're building and working hard to get an award show for trucking. Um, we want to hand out nice prizes. And our goal is to max the place out because we're going to give a grand prize away of a brand new truck. So wow. if we sell out the place, then the, the grand prize will go up to one fifty, hundred fifty thousand dollars value, which would allow you to get a truck. So, of course, it's based on ticket sales on the prize. So that's why we're doing a dollar value on it. Um, but worst case, you might end up with a trip or you might end up with a brand new trailer. So um, either way, we're going to give away some nice prizes. Um, we want to start to uh, celebrate the people that have done great in the industry. Um, we want to do a lot, but the biggest gap um, is, I mean, you have brokers, man, with truckers, truckers, man, with brokers. You have uh, a lot of talking heads in the industry um, that sometimes don't always push the right narrative to make trucking successful. So um, we have people like yourself that's educating the youth, that's putting them behind the wheels. So I think there's a place for all of that under one roof. And that's what we're working toward doing. So we're looking to do a war show. Down in New Orleans, where we're going to stuff you and feed you. If you're skinny, don't worry, we're going to fat you up. And, and if you're a big guy, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> so, but we when, is, when that. is that going to be? We're looking to host it right after the Super Bowl um, next year in 2025. So um, this year, we're going to hit the ground running. We're going to be at Matt's. Um, we're going to be there talking about it. We're going to be there meeting the people, talking with the people. We're looking to get into a lot of other shows. Um, I just launched the Intermodal division in my company. So I'm looking to get to the Intermodal conference that they host out in California every year. So I got a lot of places I plan on being this year. But the number one goal is to promote the award show, um, let people know that I'm out here, um, let people know that I'm pushing the right narrative in the industry. And I want to speak to those who are, um, who are doing, the, doing, the, doing the job the correct way. Um, we're also going to make it friendly for uh, media, people like yourself who promote the industry, where you guys can get in. And, and tell your stories and, 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 and also be a part of it. Interview people if that's what you want to do. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to make it real friendly for those who promote the industry as well as those who are working in the industry. And I look forward to seeing everyone. Else. And we'll definitely bring you back before that so we can promote it even more and remind people about it. That sounds yeah. really great. Um, yeah. And I, I just love 
just having this conversation with you. You have a friend in me. If you ever need anything, I'm definitely here. What I love the most about you is like your ability to think through problems and your ability to kind of simplify a lot of things that a lot of people can't and your positive energy, right? So what you said about being prepared, uh, like it doesn't matter who the president is. It doesn't matter what the economy does. Like there's money to be made out there. You made a great point. There's billions of dollars getting moved every single year in the trucking industry itself. All you need is a very small piece of that and you can get all your dreams accomplished. And when you have a system like Joe, uh, has created, then it makes things a whole lot easier. So yeah. uh, if you're looking to help out uh, yourself and get yourself in the right team, a person like Joe is definitely a great person to be a mentor for you. So make sure you hit his IG and go to his website if you want more information there. Um, if you don't have a CDL license yet, then you already know where to go. CDLDrivingAcademy.com is the best place for you to go to get your CDL. So then we can connect you with guys like Joe and get you to making that $200,000 a year within two years of experience and really kind of, it's not just all about the money, right? It's about the person that you become because I'm sure you, the person that you are now is completely different than who you were at 20 years old with your first truck and you kind of went through all these ups and downs and you can kind of look back and see through all the hard times that you've been through and that's probably what you're the most successful. That's probably what you're the most proud of. Not, not even all the money you've made, but the person you become and the problems that you've been able to solve. Do you agree? Totally, totally. And, and if I can give your listeners a little more motivation, um, we talked about a down year. During the pandemic, I grew my company by half a million. So when we were at our worst, I was at my best. Um, win is win. <laughs> Just put in the work. It, it, it's out there waiting for you. So, but Jonathan, I appreciate you, man. Hey, if y'all looking for a CDL school, definitely check out CDL Driving Academy. Um, great guy. I'm honored to be on your channel. I appreciate you having me. Um, let me know as well over here. You got a friend over here. So if there's something I can do, feel free to reach out. Um, if you had any of the truck shows, let me know if you got a boot, I'll stop by. And, uh, man, I look, I look forward to, uh, to doing bigger things in the industry, man. So I'm, I'm not done yet. I'm just 42, man. I can't retire yet. <laughs> That's it. We still, we still got a lot of things to go and maybe he might open up a school down in Louisiana. Who knows? Hey, one more thing too. I'm at a lot of resets as well. My guy, uh, Ramel with the uh, truck and hustle. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. Um, I do a lot of resets with him. So if you ever catch any of those, sometimes you might run into me in there and, uh, I always take time, set time aside, um, to talk with people. Cause I understand being that guy that was lost and wanting information. So definitely reach out to me. Like I tell people, get me how you get me. Just don't show up at my house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, other than that, man, so people call me, they Google me, they do all kind of stuff. So at first it felt a little weird, but now I understand. Um, I probably would have did the same thing if I ever, I felt the guy had something that I wanted. So, but other than that, man, I appreciate you guys. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. And I'll see you guys on the next episode again. Our mission is to try to help a million people get on the road to freedom. And Joe is definitely a good partner in this, of helping people get truly free and getting to them where they want to go. Thank you very much. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, guys. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully, we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.